Hi everyone, I'm Matea from the Developer Experience team here in Memgraph, and today I'll guide you through a Jupyter Notebook example on how to extract entities from an unstructured data using SPACE, which is an advanced NLP library in Python, and then using those entities, construct a knowledge graph in Memgraph. Before we get started, we have to make sure that we have a running Memgraph instance because we'll be connecting to it in order to create our graph. With Docker running in the background, the easiest way to get started with Memgraph is running one of the following commands based on your operating system. Now, these commands run a script that downloads a Docker Compose file to your system. It builds and starts Memgraph Mage and Memgraph Lab Docker services in two separate containers. After you have a running instance, you can check it out on localhost 3000 in your browser, or you can visit the desktop version of the app, which I'll be using today, and where we'll be able to visualize our graph after constructing it and query it directly from the query execution tab. Now that we have a running member of instance, let's get started with extracting the entities from an unstructured data. To extract those entities using SPACE, we first need to install SPACE and the specific model we'll be using today. SPACE has trained pipelines for over 20 languages, and today we are using the model for the English language. Since I already installed SPACE, I'll skip ahead this step. Now, another dependency we'll be needing is OpenAI, which we'll be using for constructing a JSON file of all of the nodes and relationships we want to create in a graph later on, and Neo4j, since we'll be using Neo4j's driver to connect to MemGraph. After we installed OpenAI, the next step is to set up your OpenAI API key. Now, of course, I'm going to do that off camera and be right back. Now that we've set and saved our OpenAI API key, it's time to extract our entities from the unstructured data. In our case, that will be the text sample of the summary of a book, the catcher in the right. Now let's store that summary in the summary variable, which will later on pass as an argument to space it to extract entities from. Now we finally come to the actual entity extraction part of the example. Before extracting entities, we first need to load the spacey model that we previously downloaded. And using that model, space is going to first process text by separating into sentences and then from each sentence extract entities it considers relevant based on the model we selected. After the text is processed, we'll end up with a process data JSON file where we'll have stored the list of the sentences from the text as well as the entities and labels from each sentence. Now after executing the cell and here you can see the output example and in this example we have stored both sentences and the entities extract from that sentence as well as their assigned labels. Spacey comes with a predefined set of labels and will assign each entity with one of those labels. Now we do the same thing for each of the sentences from the text and we receive this kind of output that we're going to pass on to the LLM model. Now that we have our process data output file, the next step will be passing it on to the LLM in order to create our list of wanted nodes and relationships in the future graph. The most important part in this step will be configuring a proper prompt in order to receive the wanted response from the LLM. Here we are using OpenAI's GPT-4 model and passing on the process data JSON file. When formulating a prompt, I gave it strict directions because I want to use the response from LLM in order to create queries, which will create the graph later on. Now, I want my LLM to extract entities and relationships from the following JSON data that I provided. For each of the entity extracted by Spacey, I wanted to create a node. I want that node to have the ID field, which we'll later on use to create relationships with. I want it to have a name property, which will be the entity text, and the type property, which will later become the entity label. Now, here in this step, we can see the real value of SPACE because SPACE is trained on a language, on a certain language, and it will extract entities from a text much better than a regular LLM model. 
And now, since we're pro providing both entities and the text in between the entities, or the text that entities are extracted from, I want LLM to create relationships based on that text. So we, we both have entities extracted by Spacey, and we have the context behind those entities. So I've directed my prompt or my LLM that to create relationships from that text. I want to have a source node ID and target node ID that, that I will use to connect the relationships. I want a specific format for the relationships, and I don't want any text in between the output because I'm going to use that JSON file to create queries, and I want to have uh, any text in between. After we send this to the LLM and receive the response, we will store that response in the structured data variable that we'll later on use in order to generate our queries. Now, here you can see the, the example of the output of the LLM response. You can see that the output is clean, so we don't have any text in between. We only have nodes that we want to create and relationships in between those nodes. We can see that nodes have the ID fields that we'll use in order to create the relationships with, and we have the name property and the type property. Here are some of the examples of the labels that can be predefined with Spacey. So we have a person, a date, a geopolitical event, and organization. Using this output, we will now generate the queries that we'll use in order to create a graph in our database. Here we can see we have a function that does that. So for each of the nodes provided, we want to create a node in the database. We want it to have a label, the type label from the extracted entity. We want it to have the ID property and the name property, and we want it to be connected with the relationships provided. So we are matching the nodes based on the ID field and then creating the relationships in between. After running this, we have a list of queries that we're going to execute in the database in order to create our graph. Now, the actual execution of queries is, I think, the most straightforward part of this example. We have to first initialize the Neo4j driver from MemGraph in order to connect to our database. If you have username and password set, you will insert that here. And if you haven't, the default is empty string, so you can just leave this as is. After initializing the driver, we're going to use that to execute our queries. Now, since I want a freshly created graph, so newly created graph, I'm going to also add the match detach delete query in order to delete or drop my database before creating a new one. If you want to just add on to your existing data, you're going to delete this line of code and skip this deletion step. And after executing the cell, you can see that all of our queries were successfully executed, and we should now be able to visualize our graph either on the local host 3000 in your browser or the desktop version of MemGraph Lab. In our MemGraph lab, you can see that the count for nodes and edges went up, meaning that we've successfully executed our queries and generated our graph. Now, if I want to visualize that graph, I can run the following query, which returns all of the available paths in the graph and enables us to visualize all of the nodes and relationships in between them. So we can see that the whole hold and call field is the center node, which makes sense since he is the main character in the book. And you can see all the other entities that got created and relationships between those entities. Now, from this point on, you can play with your graph, you can run some queries, you can visualize your data, you can run some algorithms on the graph or just generate your graph schema. So I hope this was useful to you and that you learned a new way to construct a graph from unstructured data to extract entities and to execute those queries in MemGraph.